I'll now introduce the idea of pipes, which are commonly used in tidyverse throughout all of the different packages. Before I get into what is a pipe, I'm going to walk you through an example so that you can get an idea for why a pipe is even needed and what its purpose is. So let's first run through an example of trying to do something without using a pipe. The question I'm asking is, how can we find the number of unique values in a vector? Typically, the way I would start doing this is I would uh, generate a vector uh, that has some values that repeat, look at how many unique values are in there, or what are the unique values, and then I would try to count the number of unique values. So what, you're see, what you can see I'm doing here is I start by setting a seed, which is basically a way of making sure that the next couple lines of code are reproducible, whether I'm running it or you're running it. Anytime you use a random num number generator, there's a chance that you and I will get different results. Setting a seed is a, a way of avoiding that so that you can see exactly the same output that I do if you run these lines of code on your computer. So after setting the seed, I use the sample function with the vector 1 through 100, which tells it to you know, pick randomly from the values between 1 and 100 with the argument replace equals true which just says that I should be sampling with replacement. Uh, in other words, when I'm picking values 1 through 100, uh, and I'm doing that 100 times, I should consider all the values every single time, such that I might select the same number twice. So after I do that and I assign that to the variable a, let's take a look at a really closely for a second. If you look, uh, I think at the 37th value, which is the fourth row, first column, you'll see that there's a three. If you go two rows down and one column to the right, there's another three. And you'll notice that there's some other repeats here, like I think eight repeats a couple of times, nine repeats a couple of times, um, and seven repeats a couple of times. If you were to look at just the length of the variable a, which is the vector, you'll notice that it has 100 uh, items in it, which is not surprising because I had asked for a sample to return 100 items. If I look at what are the unique values in A, you actually see all the values in A that are uh, unique, meaning whether there's repeats or not, everything only uh, shows up once when you do unique A. Um, regardless of the number of times it was there in the original vector A. I can see just from the brackets on the left that there is 61, 2, 3, 4, 5, so 65 items. But if I wanted to calculate that with code, I could use the length function on top of the unique function, on top of the A vector, to get back the value 65, which tells me there's 65 unique values in the vector A. So length unique A is hard to explain to someone because what you're effectively trying to say out loud is that this function is giving you the length of the unique values of A. What I'd like to say instead, if I'm talking about uh, what I want to do here, is start with A, then get the unique values, and then count them. Because if you remember what we actually did on the last slide, that's kind of the order we actually did this in. Uh, because it's the most intuitive order. We first generated A, we then got the unique values out, and then we counted how many unique values there were. And when you convert length unique A into a, a piped function, you actually can write A pipe unique pipe length. Um, and if you're wondering what that pipe is and how you generate it in R, uh, if you're in R Studio, you can use shift control M to generate the pipe, and you can use uh, command instead of control uh, on a Mac. The reason it's uh, shift control M is that the pipe comes from the Magritter package, and because Magritter package starts with an M, the folks at RStudio mapped it to uh, shift control M. This is a super common uh, shortcut that uh, I use all the time, so I encourage you to add this one to your list of shortcuts that you're going to um, 
write down and memorize and try to use uh, on a consistent basis. So if you're looking at a pipe unique pipe length and wondering what the heck is that, just replace the word pipe with the word then. And if you do that, the way you'll read this uh, code on the top right is take A, then get the unique values, then get the length of that. And that's actually easier to explain uh, than it is to say that you want the length of the unique values of A. The reason the pipe version is a little bit more clear in what you want to do is that it actually reads in the correct order. When you're trying to say start with A, then get the unique values, and then get the length in that first line of code, you're actually reading from the inside and working your way out because you're starting with the A and then working your way back out to length. However, when you use the pipes to write the same exact line of code, you're actually reading from left to right because you're saying start with A, get the unique values, and then calculate the length. So how does the pipe work? Well, uh, you don't have to know this in a lot of detail, but I'll mention it because you'll be using pipes a lot and may want to know a little bit about how they actually work. The pipe is a special type of function called an infix operator. All that means is that unlike a regular function, which has a parenthesis and accepts arguments inside of the parenthesis, an infix operator accepts arguments on either side of it. And so literally what the pipe function does is it takes what's on the left and wraps it inside of the function that's on the right. So let's say that the function we're talking about is mean. If I were to write a pipe mean, what that would get transformed into is mean parenthesis a and parenthesis. So basically what I'd be saying is, Start with A, then calculate the mean. If, however, A had some missing values in it and I needed to tell the mean function that to get rid of those first, I could still supply that information of na.rm equals true inside the mean function. And in that case, what the pipe is going to do is take A and insert it as the very first argument inside of mean while preserving any other arguments that you've provided inside of the mean function, such that a pipe or a then mean na.rm equals true becomes mean with the first argument of a comma na.rm equals true. And this uh, third example is something that you're probably not going to use very often, but it's just to let you know that the default is for the pipe function to insert whatever's on the left as the very first argument on the right. If for some reason you want to insert what's on the left anywhere else, you actually have to do that by using a, a dot or a period. And so if you wanted, if you had the value true and you wanted to pipe that into the na.rm uh, argument, you would, you couldn't just type in, you know, true pipe mean a uh, because that would actually insert true as your first argument before the A. Instead, you would add a period which tells the pipe where to insert that true value uh, from the left all the way to the right. And going back to our initial example, what's actually happening with the pipe here is when you write A, then unique, then length with pipes in it, the first thing that happens is the value A gets inserted into unique, then the entire uh, expression unique a gets inserted into length such that a pipe unique pipe length or a then unique then length is the literally identical code as length unique a there are a couple of best practices to know about when you're using pipes uh, the main one is that each function that you use in a pipe should return the same type of object that goes into the pipe. And specifically, when dplyr was designed, which is the main data manipulation package uh, in tidyverse, it was designed with pipes in mind, such that the first argument of any dplyr function is typically a data frame, and the output of every single dplyr function is typically a data frame. And so you always know that if you 
run a series of deep plier functions in, in a series of pipes on a data frame, you'll always get back a data frame at the very end.